part nine of the witches coming right up. We are on page 81. First, I am explaining to you how my Formula 86 delayed action mouse maker is working. Listen carefully. We are listening, cried the audience, who was now jumping up and down in their chairs with excitement. Delayed action mouse maker is a green liquid, explaining the Grand High Witch, and, won't and one droplet in each chocolate or sweet will be quite enough. So here is what happens. Child eats chocolate which has it in it delayed action mouse maker liquid. Child goes home feeling fine. Child goes to bed still feeling fine. Child wakes up in the morning, still okay. Child goes off to school, still feeling fine. Formula, you understand, is delayed action. It's and is not working yet. We understand, oh brainy one, cried the audience. But when does it start working? It is starting to work at exactly nine o'clock when the child is arriving at school. The Grand High Witch triumphantly shouted, Child arrives at school, delayed action, mouse maker immediately starts to wreck, child starts to shrink, child is starting to grow fur, child is starting to grow tail, all is happening is precisely 26 seconds. After 26 seconds, child is not a child any longer, it is a mouse. A mouse, cried the witches. What a frumptious thought. Classrooms will all be swarming with mice, shouted the Grand High Witch. Chaos and pandemonium will be reigning in every school in England. Teachers will be hopping up and down. Venom, teachers will be standing on desks and holding up skirts and yelling, Hap, hap, hap. They will, they will, cried the audience. And what, shouted the Grand High Witch, is happening next in every school? Tell us, they cried, tell us, oh brainy one. The Grand High Witch stretched her stringy neck forward and grinned at the audience, showing two rows of pointed teeth, slightly blue. She raised her voice louder than ever and shouted, Mouse Trapus is coming out! Mouse traps, cried the witches, and cheese, shouted the Grand High Witch. Teachers is all rushing and rerunning around and getting mouse traps and baiting them with cheese and putting them down all over school. Mice is nibbling cheese. Mouse traps is going off. All over school, mouse traps is going snappity snap, and mouse heads is rolling all over the floors like marbles. All over England, in every school in England, noise of snapping mouse traps will be heard. At this point, the disgusting old grand high witch began to do a sort of witch's dance up and down the platform, stamping her feet and clapping her hands. The entire audience joined in the clapping and the foot stomping. They were making such a tremendous racket that I thought surely Mr. Stringer would hear it and come banging at the door, but he didn't. Then above all the noise, I heard the voice of the Grand High Witch screaming out some sort of an awful gloating song. Down wish children to them and boil their bones and fry their skin. Biss them, squish them, bash them, mash them, break them, shake them, slash them, smash them. Offer chocolates with magic powder. Say eat the hip, then say it louder. Cram them full of sticky eats, send them home still guzzling sweets, and in the morning little fools go watching off to separate schools. A girl feels sick and goes all pale, she yells, hey look, I'm grown as hell. A boy who's standing next to her screams, help, I think I'm growing fur. Another shouts, we look like freaks. These viscous growing on our cheeks. A boy who was extremely tall cries out, what's wrong? I'm growing small. For tiny legs began to sprout from every body round about. And all at once, all at thrice, there are no children, only mice. In every school is mice galore, all running round the schoolroom floor. And all the poor demented teachers is yelling, hey, who are these creatures? 
They stand upon the desks and shout, Get out, you filthy mouse, get out! Will someone fetch some mousy traps, please? And don't forget to bring the cheese. Now mouse traps come in every trap. Go snippity snap and snappity snap. The mouse traps have a powerful spring. The springs go crap and snap and ping. Is lovely noise for us to hear. Is music to a witch's ear. Dead mice is every place around. Pop two feet deep into the ground. With teachers searching left and right. But not a single child in sight. The teachers cry, what's going on? Oh, where have all the children gone? It's half past nine and as a rule. They're never late as this for school. Poor teachers don't know what to do. Some sit and read and just a few amuse themselves throughout the day by sweeping all the mouse away and all the witches shout hooray! The recipe. I hope you haven't forgotten that while all this was going on, I was still stuck behind the screen on my hands and knees with one eye glued to the crack. I don't know how long I had been there, but it seemed like forever. The worst part of it was not being allowed to cough or make a sound and knowing that if I did, I was as good as dead. And all the way through, I was living in constant terror that one of the witches in the back row was going to get a whiff of my presence through those special nose holes of hers. My only hope as I saw it was the fact that I hadn't washed for days. That and the never ending excitement and clapping and shouting that was going on in the room. The witches were thinking of nothing except the grand high witch up there on the platform and her great plan for wiping out all the children of England. They certainly weren't sniffing around for a child in the room. In their wildest dreams, if witches have dreams, they would never have occurred to any of them. I kept still and prayed. The Grand High Witch's dreadful gloating song was over now, and the audience was clapping madly and shouting, Brilliant! Sensational! Marvelous! You are a genius, oh brainy one! It is a thrilling invention, this delayed action mouse maker. It is a winner, and the beauty of it is that the teachers will be the ones to bump off the staking little children. It won't be us doing it. We shall never be caught! Witches are never caught, snapped the Grand High Witch. Attention now! I want everyone's attention, for I am about to be telling you what you must do to prepare Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Suddenly there came a great gasp from the audience. This was followed by a hubbub of shrieking and yelling, and I saw many of the witches leaping to their feet and pointing at the platform and crying out, Mice! 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 She's done it to show us! The brainy one has turned two children into mice, and there they are! I looked toward the platform. The mice were there all right, two of them, running around near the Grand High Witch's skirts. But these were not field mice or house mice or wood mice or harvest mouse. They were white mice. I recognized them immediately as being my own little William and Mary. Mice! shouted the audience. Our leader has made mice to appear out of nowhere. Get the mouse traps, fetch the cheese! I saw the Grand High Witch peering down at the floor and staring with obvious puzzlement as William and Mary. She bent down lower to get a closer look. Then she strained up and shouted, Quiet! The audience became silent and sat down. These mice are nothing to do with me, she shouted. These mice are pet mice. The mice are quite obviously belonging to some repellent little child in this hotel. A boy it will be for a certainty, because girls are not keeping pet mice. A boy? cried the witches. A filthy, smelly little boy will swipe him, will swizzle him, will have his tripes for breakfast. Silence! shouted the Grand High Witch, raising her hands. You know perfectly well you must do nothing to draw attention to yourselves while you are living in the hotel. Let us by all means get rid of this evil-smelling little squirt. By it, we must do it quietly as possible, for are we not all of us the most irrespectable ladies of the Royal Society, the prevention of cruelty to children? What do you suggest then, O brainy one? They cried out. How, will sh how shall we dispose of this small pile of filth? They're talking about me, I thought. These females are actually talking about how to kill me. I began to sweat. Whoever he is, he is not important, announced the Grand High Witch. Leave him to me. I shall smell him out and turn him into a mackerel and have him dished up for supper. Bravo!
bravo, cried the witches. Cut off his head and chop off his tail and fry him in hot butter. You can imagine that none of this was making me feel very comfortable. William and Mary are still running around on the platform, and I saw the Grand High Witch aim a swift running kick at William. She caught him right on the point of her toe and sent him flying. She did the same to Mary. Her aim was extraordinary. She would have made a great football player. Both mice crashed against the wall, and for a few moments they lay stunned. Then they got to their feet and scampered away. Attention again! The Grand High Witch was shouting, I will now give to you the recipe for concocting Formula 86 Delayed Action Mouse Maker. Get out pencils and paper. Handbags were open all over the room and notebooks were fished out. Give us the recipe, oh brainy one, cried the audience impatiently. Tell us the secret. First said the Grand High Witch. I had to find something that would cause the children to come very small very quickly. And what was that? cried the audience. That was, that part was simple, And the Grand High, said the Grand High Witch. All you have to do if you are wishing to make a child very small is to look at him through the wrong end of a telescope. She's a wonder, cried the audience. Who else would have thought of a thing like that? So you take the wrong ends of the telescope, continued the Grand High Witch, and you boil it until it gets soft. How long does that take? They asked her. Twenty-one hours of boiling, answered the Grand High Witch. And while this is going on, you take exactly forty-five brown mice and you chop off their tails with a carving knife and you fry the tails in hair oil until they are nice and crisp. What do we do with those mice who have had their tails chopped off? asked the audience. You simmer them in frog juice for one hour, came the answer. But listen to me. So far, I have not, I have only given you the easy part of the recipe. The really difficult problem is to put something that will have a genuine delayed action result. Something that can be eaten by children on a certain day that which, that which will not start working on them until nine o'clock the next morning when they arrive at school. What did you come up with, oh brainy one, they called out. Tell us the great secret. The secret, announced the Grand High Witch triumphantly, is an alarm clock. An alarm clock, they cried. It's a stroke of genius. Of course it is, said the Grand High Witch. You can set a 24-hour alarm clock today, and it's exactly 9 o'clock tomorrow. It will go off. But we will need 5 million alarm clocks, cried the audience. We will need one for each child. Idiots! shouted the Grand High Witch. If you're wanting a steak, you do not cook the whole cow. It is the same with alarm clocks. One clock will make enough for a thousand children. Here's what you do. You set your alarm clock to go off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Then you roast it in the oven until it is crisp and tender. And are you writing this down? We are your grand grandness. We are, they cried. There's the alarm clock. So stay tuned for part 10.